My name is Sam Suresh from uh, Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur. How many of you have been to Kuala Lumpur? All right, not many. <laughs> so um, I had some conversation with a lot of uh, universities and I found a lot of people not aware how to use Moodle Report Builder or other report tools through plugins and all that. So I thought I might speak about this in global mode today. So uh, let's look at um, short presentation. So I'll just go fast. Uh, in Moodle 4.5, um, I'll cover my topic around Moodle 4.5 since that's the LTS long-term support. You probably use it for next three years. So there's three options you have to generate report. Of course, you have many other options through third-party plugins or certified integrations that offer reporting capabilities. The first one, cost reports. It's been there for 20 years, so I don't want to talk about it. The second one is Report Builder. I'll cover a bit more about Report Builder in this presentation. And the third one is ad hoc database queries. And I will cover about, about this as well, since Report Builder still lack a lot of features. And I give you an opportunity to vote on that tracker that I have created so that we all can spam the tracker today. So Moodle HQ will add those lacking features in the Report Builder. So for this um, presentation, I've created, I set up a presentation, uh, a Moodle uh, Academy called Heartbroken Academy. So we have several categories like moving on, red flag in relationships, second chances. And there's causes like letting go 101, advanced pillow occurring techniques. So I want to generate a report to find out if anyone not doing well in letting go, but maybe excelling in advanced pillow occurring techniques. So for this, I'm going to use Report Builder. So let's uh, first and foremost, um, how do we access Report Builder? Report Builder is from the report, and then you go to Report Builder, and there's custom reports. By default, yeah, um, admins have access, uh, but they can delegate this to any role. So if you create any custom roles, you can give that capabilities to that role to generate new reports. So we have like, LND, we have a learning administrators, cost administrators, roles that we have delegated this feed, this capability so they can create their own report. Let's create the first report, uh, find total number of students by department, uh, quick demo. So um, go to Report Builder, click new, uh, type a report name, and then choose a report source. So for this instance, I'm gonna choose users I uh, check the default settings so I got a clean slate so I can choose the information that I need on the left so you just press plus 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 to add whatever you need and once you have everything you need next step is you can see the aggregation method of course you can rename it to make it more um, relevant for your report and then in the aggregation I choose count so now I got number of user by department and by institution Right, so that's the first example. We use count in Report Builder. Um, when we use count, uh, and of course, um, I get one more report here about uh, students in, yeah. So when, it, when we just generated this report, as you can see on the first line, I have one user, that's admin account. So I want to exclude it. So Report Builder comes with conditions feature, allow you to exclude certain data that you don't want to include in your report. So um, to do that, um, we can use conditions. So I'm going uh, to do one more demo. So this is a report we had earlier. Now I go to conditions on the right and that condition to exclude this one user is, uh, I'm going to say username, and then um, val does not contain, for example, admin. That's a bad username for security reasons, but for this example. So now it's excluded that, and I don't have that in my report. So that's how you can use conditions, um, because report can be created and can be made available for, for example, for department heads. Right? They can see reports that's relevant for the department. Um, maybe course leader, they can see reports that are relevant for the, for the uh, courses. You can make reports available for other users to view only, to download it, so that you may want to exclude some of these records using the conditions. So conditions technically uh, filter out records. Uh, filters, in the other hand, give them filter, ability to filter the records that they are viewing. So, um, 
That's about conditions. Now moving on, number of causes um, uh, users taking. So this is one other report I have generated using uh, same aggregation method, but now I use count again. So I have added participants, uh, users full name, and then department again. I have added causes that they have enrolled in. But with that setup, you can see the setup is the cost source is cost participant user uh, full name is added, and then cost full name is to count how many causes they are taking. So I got a report, a number of causes uh, taken by each user on this side. All right, moving on, one other report. I wanna see how many causes uh, the users are enrolled compared to number of causes they have completed. So uh, for this re uh, report, I've added a uh, source. Um, as you can see, cost participants again, I think that's one of the most used source in the report builder, right? So cost participant probably give you all the information about cost, their participation, whether they have completed or not, their progress, and so on. And now uh, I've added that completed, completion completed. Completion co completed probably will give you yes or no because it's a Boolean, one or zero. You can just use sum to count total number of causes completed. So now it shows like these are the categories or the schools or the faculties and the causes and then total number of users enrolled and total number of users that completed that course, right? So. I use count and some aggregation, same way you add um, all the objects you need in your report and then in the aggregation you just choose either count or sum. Um, I did one more thing in the sorting on the right side, you have condition, filter and sorting. In the sorting I've choose completed uh, uh, descending, so I have the highest number on top completed followed by the lowest. So that is the use of sorting. You can always um, sort your data, whether it um, ascending or descending, uh, following any of the field that you have checked, right? So report builder give you ability to set conditions, to filter out data, to set filter, to give filter for your end users to view the report, and then sorting allow you to sort the data. And one other feature that we see in the aggregation is comma separated distinct values. For this, um, I want to find out which are the cohort. Uh, cohort sync is a very common um, user enrollment method we use in causes, right? So we add user and then that user already automatically added to the causes. So I want to find out which causes actually has what kind of cohort being synced. So that, um, th because this is traditionally difficult to find out, unless you go and open that course and see the enrollment methods that's being synced. So now uh, with the report builder, you can use comma separate distinct values. So what are the things I have here is, uh, the source is course participant again, and then I have course full name, enroll method, Name. name is like whether it's manual, cohort sync, and so on. So with that, um, I use the aggregation method, sep comma separated distinct values. That gives me which causes had what kind of cohort being synced to that, uh, that course. So that is one other example how to use aggregations in um, Report Builder. And now I want to show one of the example how to use audience and access in Report Builder. So I have that report created. For example, the previous report I have created, I have enrolled users and number of users that completed that course. Now I want to make this report av available to one of the department head. So to do that, so I set the condition, uh, first of all, um, category that that department head is in charge of, so he only see the data that's relevant for him, which is just show two rows for him now. All right, the report is done. Now I go to audience. In the audience, I choose manually added users, so I can select which user um, is uh, able to access this report. So of course, in work model workplace, you have more options like you can choose which user reporting to you and so on. Uh, in Moodle LMS, these are the options you have. Uh, I've selected Joel there to access this report and the audience is saved and now if I go to access, I can see he's the one that can access this report. Although the access tab is not so useful in Moodle LMS, probably in Moodle Workplace, it will show 
inherited uh, permissions. So now um, I have that made available to one of the department head. He's logging into his Moodle and he go to that user menu and he click on reports. And you can see that report is available for him to access. And when he click on that report, he technically can see the exact same data. There's no any edit features for him and he can download the data. Right? And of course, you have ability to email that report to, to, to the person that you made that available as well. So that is how we can make reports available to a specific user um, on Moodle Report Builder. Uh, of course, we can use scheduling. Um, it's useful if you need to deliver a report on a fixed uh, schedule, like uh, maybe every week um, you want to see number of users that completed a course or number of users that enroll in that program. Uh, you can use scheduler and you can schedule that particular report. Um, there are some of the options for you to, to do that. And that's all about Report Builder. Um, I know Report Builder lack a lot of features like the one we had in Moodle Configurable Report. How many of you have used Configurable Reports? Right, we love that, right? Because you can write any kind of SQL and you can come out any kind of report and there's charts and all that. Unfortunately, it, it don't work with Moodle 4.5 yet. Um, I'm not sure whether there will be any updates to that plugin, but this one particular plugin is called Ad Hoc Database Queries. It works with Moodle 4.5. They already have a branch in GitHub. If you go to GitHub and you download and install this plugin, you can write SQL reports. How many of you here can write SQL? Well done. I'm scared what kind of questions coming out after this presentation. <laughs> okay, so let's say you have installed this plugin or your administrator help you to install and now you have that under reports and ad hoc database queries. That's, that's how you access this plugin. And you create report. It allows you to create report and make it available to a specific roles by assigning capabilities. Unfortunately, it's not as advanced as report builder that allow you to assign a specific report, it just assign a specific capability, then they can see the entire report. Um, that's whichever user that has capability, that capability, they can see all that reports. For example, one of, one of the report I want to generate is distinct login by month. I want to see how many users logged in January, February, and so on. So for that, um, I'm, I'm generating a SQL, which I'll show you right after this how you can generate that. And then um, that's my SQL. And now I forgot what I did in that video. <laughs> All right, so just remember, it's just like a configurable report. So you don't put MDL or any other prefix. You use prefix as prefix and there's no trailing semicolon. And that, that's, a, that's a access uh, options you have, like three capabilities. You can, ex you can delegate who can access those reports. And um, whether you want to email the similar feature like report builders, so identical, but allow you to do. Um, so now I got that report. I got this thing login by month. In October, there's two logins, right? So whatever lacking in report builder, you can continue to use these plugins to uh, substitute that uh, to create more advanced report using SQL. Of course, you can use ChatGPT. When you use ChatGPT, uh, write this kind of prompt. Um, write an SQL for Moodle. Table prefix is prefix underscore, because the plugin requires the prefix is made as prefix underscore, to calculate total number of login by month using standard logs. And then you put no trailing semicolon so that you can copy and paste without any changes if you are not a technical person or not used to write any SQLs. So this will give you this. Here's an SQL query, calculate total number of logins by month using standard logs table in Moodle. And as you can see, it used that functions like Unix Moodle keep, keep everything in Unix timestamp. And it is in the log store, standard log store table, and use prefix as the table prefix. If you don't understand it all, no worries. You just give the right prompt, copy it, and paste it, and run it as long as it's select. So I paste it in my um, ad hoc database queries plugin, and this is the report I got, 2024, 10, that's October 12th, total logins. 
this is a new uh, demo I just pinned, so there's only logins in the uh, Octobers. So that's how you generate. And um, of course, the next prompt can be much easier. You can say, similarly generate another SQL to list all causes, number of access to the causes. As long as it's in the same thread, you will get the same format. So I got this SQL, like you can see here, it shows like, prefix as a table prefix again, and there's no trailing semicolon, although you usually put that in your SQL. And this is the report I got without any changes. So I just copy and paste, right? So without any changes, I got that report. So that is the second option you have. Uh, beside uh, Moodle reports, you have Report Builder, and now you have ad hoc database queries in Moodle 4.5, allow you to generate any kind of report using SQL. Uh, language. If you're not really familiar with SQL language, ChatGPT got your back. And to move forward with Report Builder, um, I love how the way Report Builder work. And um, yesterday, I provided in a partner um, day. I provided a lot of feedback about that as well. So I hope um, we will see more tracker and more people recommending features. So there is a Report builder um, issues that piled up in the tracker that you can follow, you can comment if you think that that feature should be available in Moodle. Uh, there's also SQL functionality uh, tracker um, request to be added to that Moodle. It's been um, um, closed for some reasons. And um, I've added a new tracker about standard logs because I believe uh, standard logs contain a lot of information like views, logins, uh, actions, lecturer actions, student actions. So we can generate a lot of reports if standard log logs is one of the source, although I understand the complications behind like amount of massive data that it has. So you can scan the QR and you can go ahead and comment and ask Model HQ to add this feature to Model Report Builder. That's how you ask for a new feature. So I hope you got uh, some idea about Moodle Report Builder and ad hoc database queries, how to generate report in Moodle. I guess that's all the time we have. <laughs> and thank you. Thank you, Suresh. Um, we have time for just one question. Anybody, one question? Otherwise, it's lunchtime. OK, one. The report builder I, is, is yeah. not there. Yeah, I, I We're always talking they will do it, but uh, we are waiting three years and it's not there. So people are not using it. Why? Because you do not have grades. Duration and time is the same. It's incredibly difficult to 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 see when people did something. So the moment duration and grades are in the report builder, it will be a dream. Now you can use it for certain things. I totally feel you. I totally agree that grades is important. I can see is the works already started. There are some patch in the tracker. It's a work in progress. So I hope it will be much very soon. All right. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.